Hello again. So this is our final installment on arithmetic sequences. Um, here's our formula again. And what I want to do is do something called finding the arithmetic means. And basically when you think about means, it's like, you know, adding all the numbers and dividing. Well, it's kind of like the same thing. You're just trying to find the middle numbers. That's, that's basically it. So I've got this arithmetic sequence. And it's going to tell you if it's an arithmetic sequence or not. So I'm going to tell you that even though I didn't write any directions. This is an arithmetic sequence. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six terms. The sixth term is 91, uh, the first term is 16. And basically what I want you to do is figure out the terms in the middle. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, I actually like doing it the second way because that's just the way I do it. And some students like doing it this way because they, they feel more acclimated with the formula. Like if I always just practice the formula, I'll get better. And there is truth to that. If you keep practicing the formula, you'll get better. Uh, I can do both ways, but then you know, it's my job as a math teacher. But I remember when I was in school, like I would just do it my second way. What, you know, I didn't like the formula because I, I just liked the way I did it. I thought it was easier. And if you like doing that, who cares? So let's just do it with the formula first. And uh, here's how you would do it. Make it a little bit easier. Uh, what, what you're trying to figure out is the numbers in the middle. Well, the problem is that you're, you're trying to figure out, well, what do I have to add to get to the next term? And you are adding because the numbers are getting bigger. That's the problem. So what you're actually trying to figure out is your difference. If you can figure this bad boy out, then you could like, okay, if I add this much, okay, then that's okay. I can do it. Well, that's what we're going to do. So I want to figure out a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 d. Uh, you are actually going to put in something for a sub n, and there's a reason why. Because if you're trying to figure out your d, your common difference, every other variable has to be filled. You can't just leave n as n because it's not going to solve anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, for a sub n, let's put in something that we know. And what we know is we know a sub 6. Now some students say, well, why don't we put in uh, a sub 1? Because we need the a sub 1 in this part of the formula, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to plug in our a sub 6, our 6th six, term, pardon me, equals a sub 1, our first term, which is 16. Now, I should say this because it does cause confusion. This is the sixth term. It's not a number. I'm just saying it's the sixth term of A. Um, I'll substitute in a number in just a second. Plus N, which is 6, minus 1, because my N is 6, uh, sorry, times D. Now, the problem is we still can't actually solve for D because we have to actually say what A sub 6 is. So what is our a sub 6? What's our 6 term? And by the way, saying our 6 term is not the same as saying 91. You actually have to put the number in in order to actually solve for it. So that's what we're going to do. 91 equals 16 plus 5 minus 1 is 5d. I have to solve for d. I've done this before. Yeah, once you get to this step, it's really easy. 91 subtracted by 16 is 75 equals 5d. Now, if you want to solve for d, it's 5 times d, so how do you get rid of multiplication? You divide. And my d equals 15. My common difference equals 15. So basically, to get from one term to the next, i got to keep adding 15. And if I do that, 16 plus 15 is 31. I should do it in a different marker. 31 plus 15 is 46, 61, 76, 91. I just figured out my arithmetic means. That's it. Uh, there's another way I do it, and I compare it to finding the slope of something. You know, so I once had a student who said, well, you know, it's not like finding the slope. And I said, well, yeah, actually, I beg to differ because these are your outputs, and, you know, uh, the term of the sequence is actually the input, so technically it's exactly like finding the slope. And I had a student who was doing this before and he said, well, I discovered something. I'm like, no, he just said something faster than I was going to say it. But it's pretty cool that, you know, because some students will think like this and some students will think the second way. And it's perfectly fine as long as you're getting the right answer and you understand what's going on. Who cares? So, here we go. I've got uh, 16, 31, 46, 61, 76. I already figured out the numbers. Fine. I'm going to erase them, 
because I don't want this to clutter my mess. What I do if I want to figure that out, you know, kind of using like a rate of change method, is I take the biggest number minus the smallest number inside that, that's surrounding the means. So it's just 91 minus 16 over 91 is the sixth term, 16 is the first term. So it's basically like y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, just like finding slope. It's cool. 91 minus 16 is 75. 75 over 6 minus 1. By the way, if you put this in your calculator without putting parentheses, you will not get this as an answer. Uh, heads up, if you're just doing everything in a calculator, make sure you put parentheses around it. 75 over 5 is 15. That means 15 is my common difference. Add 15, add 15, add 15, add 15, add 15 again, and you get to 91. So that's uh, arithmetic sequences in a very uh, introductory fashion, but I think still pretty useful. I hope you found that helpful. Um, other than that, have a great day. Goodbye.